3, 2, 1. Welcome, Charles Stöng. Thank you very much. Uh, very, very happy to be back here in your fantastic studios and thank you very much for your invitation. I'm very happy to come to uh, today. We are going to talk about the Foreign Legion, French Foreign Legion. That's correct. Uh, you are a former sergeant major That's and correct. you have served 15 years in the Foreign Legion and uh, been many places out at war. And the last 20, 22 years, you work uh, as a private contractor in security all around the world. That is absolutely correct. That's a very brief description of, uh, of myself. Yeah, and uh, but your time in the Foreign Legion, uh, you get a lot of decoration. You get uh, the cross of... Uh, of um, war. War, yeah. Yes, and yes. also crosses of bravery. So you're highly decorated from yeah. your service in the Foreign Legion. Yeah, they, they say so, yeah. They say so, yeah. <laughs> Today, we are going to make a start of a little bit serious about the Foreign Legion and uh, what the Foreign Legion is about. Uh, the Foreign Legion is uh, it's a lot of myth around That's the correct. Foreign Legion. Yeah, it's a it's a Mexican captain who uh, was unlucky and uh, and uh, get in a fight with your guys uh, yeah. some years ago. We'll get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that for sure. And uh, and he he told this is not normal soldiers. This is demons. Yes. Yes. Captain Milan in uh, the 30th of April uh, 1863 in Cameron in uh, in Mexico in a battle there. And, uh, and we'll get back to those uh, those things. Uh, uh, we were going to speak about uh, how the legion is uh, in 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 many people's opinion um, one of the best fighting forces in the world, if not the best. Uh, me and you, we have been discussing this uh, often. Uh, I was, of course, within my work, within my life, uh, around in the Middle East and Africa and on conflict zones, uh, I often meet people and, and, and people will often ask me, oh, what is the, how good is the Legion compared to the SEAL team or to so a lot of things. So I, I always, you know, you have to compare apples with apples and peas with peas, you know. So what what we wanted to do today was to sort of um, make a description, find Tilt. out what the religion is. Tilt your mic upwards. Oh, yeah. yeah perfect, yeah. There we go, yeah. Uh, it's there better. Go. I'm, yeah. I'm a bit outside my, my expertise area. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. I'll, I'll be working on it. Yeah, yeah because the, the, the mic is going in uh, straight in there. So That's yeah. good. That's good. It's like uh, Joe Rogan. He also yeah. has to teach him uh, how to yeah, do it. It's quite easy to forget when you sit in a pod situation like this, you know. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, yeah, and and they're not comparable. You know, um, it's like if you compare cars, a Ferrari is not a Land Rover. They don't do the same things. So uh, I thought we'd start uh, giving you uh, is it what I call it, a little brief? Is it? Uh, I wanted to speak a little bit about. Uh, I thought we'd start with a bit of the history of the Legion. Yeah in order to build the framework around what is going on. Yeah. And 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 the Legion is, is almost 160 years old. It was it's created in 1831. And I think we have to take one step back and, and look at um, the world in Europe in 1831. It's quite different for to, from today. And and France was once more a kingdom. Uh, many Nations in most, absolutely most nations in Europe, if not all, were kingdoms in those days. The geopolitical situation was very different. And uh, it was not uncommon uh, in those days to have foreign troops uh, fighting for itself. In other words, mercenaries. Yes. Well, they, those days they were not mercenaries. They were, we had in, 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 in France, even earlier and before the revolution, we had, we had troops like... Uh, uh, Royal Swedois, which is the kingdom, the Swedish uh, troops. We had really? a Scottish troop in the French army. So it was also the Swiss that was the base for the Legion. So it was quite common in those days. But if we go back and look at Europe in, in 1831, uh, King Louis-Philippe uh, is the king of France. And um, France is out of its Napoleonic wars. Uh, Napoleon is no more. They're back a kingdom. And France has a lot of ex-soldiers, uh, ex-soldiers, foreigners from these foreign regiments. Do I smell trouble? <laughs> Do I smell trouble in French society? So they have all these ex-soldiers creating stories, uh, difficulties in general. So 
uh, they were a nuisance to the society. At the same time, uh, France is not in direct conflict, but the uh, you might know the, the Ottoman Empire, um, the Middle East and the Islamic world in those days was represented by the Ottoman Empire, by the Turkish, we can say. To the say, Turkish, say, yeah. the Ottoman? The Ottoman Empire. Okay. Yeah. And um, if we go back and look, you know, the, 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 the Turks, to say it's simple, you know, not to be compared with the day Turks of today. This oh. is a historical perspective. Um, they have been expanding in Europe enormously up to 1683, where they were stopped in Vienna. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, there was a big battle of, uh, of Vienna in 1683, where, where they lost. Uh, the Poles came to the, the help of the Austrians and the Germans, or whatever we call them in those days. So um, we can actually thank the Poles that we are not all Islamic today. But that's another. So the Turkish was a, was a force to reckon with. Oh, it was a huge empire. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, good soldiers. Big, big colonial empire, uh, much bigger than than any of the others in those days. Yes. So what happened is that uh, the Turks have been slowly experienced those over 100 years since the battle in 18, in 1683, a decline in Europe. But they were still in North Africa, and North Africa uh, was a sort of a wild area with a lot of pirates and a lot of uh, taking slaves in the Mediterranean Sea. You know, they were raiding cities in the south of France and in Spain and often in Italy. We don't know so much about this, but even people were taken from Iceland. Uh, even from back, Iceland? Brought back to North Africa, to the Ottoman Empire there and sold the slaves. So, so they sold Iceland people as slaves in North Africa? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. There, I didn't there, know that. Yeah, there. So, so France had a problem on the southern borders, and France, uh, with this King Louis Philippe, said, "Well, let's conquer the northern African. The Ottoman Empire is weak. Uh, there are several small kings there, or what we call vassal states. In those days, expansion was not a problem. So they wanted to occupy northern Africa, which they did. And by the same time, they thought, well, we have all these guys.'" creating trouble, so we create the Foreign Legion, we hire these people, we will not use them in France, that was the, the idea in those days, and we will send them to North Africa to conquer North Africa, and that's what they did. And that was battle-hearted guys. Exactly. And they, they wanted blood. They yeah. wanted to get out and get adventure, get action. Of course. Yes. And the and French, and French wanted to get them out of society, you know, so. Win-win the, situation. That That is the base, and and so the legion is sent out it's i'm not an historian i, I won't go into all the details uh, of course but it starts in 1831 and the legion is sent to north africa where it ends up um, being an operational force that among with other forces was it uh, many soldiers no i don't know exactly but oh. i uh, we, we talk about one regiment uh, okay. two regiments uh, one was sent to Spain sold it's a bit but a few thousand yeah, a few yeah, thousand yeah, yeah. and these these were uh, entering North Africa conquering uh, Sahara all these desert areas and they stayed there for over a hundred years and evolving into counterinsurgency because you know this was counterinsurgency you 150 years before counterinsurgency became the uh, issue. Explain that for the people who are listening, counterinsurgency. What was what, so, the base, fundamental of this? So so the counterinsurgency is 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 more, instead of a, a, a traditional war where you have two fronts, two armies, uh, like we have in Ukraine today, confronting each other. No, you have, in in a way, one nation or one, one, one force has occupied an area. Uh, not everybody in the area might be happy about it, and then they want to to take back, they are rebels, or they want to yeah, resist. So we create counterinsurgency where we go in and fight insurgents. Okay. And this was the Legion's uh, business job from the beginning. And that's very interesting when we are, we are going to talk about how it becomes such a good fighting force. And that's where I, want to, I wanted to draw this picture first to, to, to give you the idea that I'm sure you have seen in the films from the 60s and the 30s about these legionaries walking in the desert, march or With die. Yeah, march or die. And, 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 
And we have to realize that these were units that were quite small. They were a company. Usually they would never be more than a company. So let's say 200 people. 200 people in a fort, hundreds of miles out in the desert from nowhere. In the middle of nowhere, yeah. yeah. And we had recruited people that were outcasts of society. They didn't have much to go back to in society. Okay. Could that be like ex-criminals or was just uh, they didn't fit in the society or they didn't it have work? It could be anything. It could be anything. You know, we are in the middle of the 19th century. Uh, so the people who hired them in or drafted them in was not particularly picky? I don't think so. No. I don't think. I wasn't there yet. <laughs> If you can walk and you can carry <laughs> yeah. a gun and you yeah, have a wheel. Yeah, it has changed with time. But uh, yeah. in those days, it's, it's, it's most likely that they were not too picky. Yeah. They needed people that could kill the enemy. Yes. Uh, and, and, and it was also a way of, of people of, of getting a new life. So, But the point is that we, we end up in the desert. But, but you can say create a new life. Was it back in that time also they could get a new identity when they start? I don't know engineer? exactly when that started, but I mean, you didn't, it was not as, as a control. Now you didn't uh, have the past control of the borders uh, and stuff. Yeah, like it was not such a controlled you, uh, society as before. It was, you know, in those days, uh, you needed to eat to live. Um, yeah, yeah. We have a famous poem written by a Captain Borley uh, sometime in the late 1900s, uh, 1800s um, in Indochina, uh, where he says, I'm a more to my dead people. And it's, it's, it's a long poem where he honors his soldiers that have died. And he says, Uh, mercenaire, peut-être, il faut bien manger pour vivre. It means mercenaries, maybe, you have to eat to live. Yeah. So in those days, it was not like today. You know, you didn't have all these options. So a lot of people ended up with, with not many options in life, and they ended up... But where I want to point is they ended up without a family, yeah. without connections, in a unit, in the desert. They got a new family. They got a new family, and and we learn it becomes like over time because we are, after all, Stone Age people. We are looking for belonging. We are looking for status. Sure. So all these people that 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 were hired um, were brought into a system where living in isolation it becomes like a monastery. It becomes like monk soldiers. Of course, nobody becomes the perfect monk soldiers, but. Living in the desert, building your own camp, building your own roads, we become completely autonomous. You understand autonomous units where we, we do everything ourselves, and it becomes like a monastery. You don't need anybody else. We don't need anybody else. We run the war like that, brutal, harsh, but also self-sustained largely, without the logistical support. Uh, no that, global oh, thinking there. No, <laughs> those days, no. So, But it folds out the base of what is the Legion today, these monk soldiers that that joins them for a new life and lives in their own society. And um, I have to check my notes here with my sure. new glasses. Uh, and I think we can, I think we can say this, this created this force that, because the goal for France was to fix the problem. You know, the, the, the legion was not made for, for people to, it's not for the, your flourishment that the legion exists if you join. Mm -hmm. It is for the legion to do the job. Yes. So the goal was to make this unit that could fix the problem, and they did. And the rest are sort of, you know, Uh, side effects, we yeah, can yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. that made it that people could come there, people could make a new f future. And of course, when they get this belonging, and we get to the point where uh, we say the legion, the, the, the motto of the legion is Legio Patria Nostra, which means the legion is our fatherland. Mm. And that is a very smart thing to do, because uh, instead of... Uh, saying we adopt France as our fatherland. Mm. We adopt the legion. And uh, it works very well because then we avoid us to actually having to deny our own fatherland. Mm. Because you can't sort of have two fatherlands. But mm. the legion is a nation, but it's not really a nation. So you end up with, yeah, I'm Norwegian. Um, Norway is my fatherland. But first of all, you're a legionnaire. Yes, I can without 
denying my Norwegian heritage, say, Legion Patria Nostra, the legion is our fatherland too. Are yeah. you going to die as a legionnaire or a Norwegian? Uh, both. Both. Both, for yeah. sure. Two different... Uh, what I mean, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are not, they are not excluding one the other. Okay. That's the key. Yeah. That, um, which, I, which I had, if I had to say, am I French or Norwegian, it becomes more complicated. You can't be, in my opinion, too. No. Yeah, no, 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 it doesn't work. No, no, no. No. So, so I have a, a strong feeling, and every legionnaire will listen to this podcast. You will see in the comment sections, I'm sure we'll get some comments. Um, yeah, we are... We remain legionnaires until the day we die. There is no doubt, you know. End of note. Yes, I yeah. could I could join my old platoon tonight. I would be completely fit in, you know. And I'm sure everybody else that listens and uh, that have been are, are convinced about this too. So we were uh, we were back in the 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 middle 1800s and. But the, the fun part when you when you say that to, to sorry. I, yeah, go ahead. We have time. The, the the fun part is. Everybody understand the Legion takes a lot of you. But for you to sit here and say what you say now, the Legion also have to give a hell of a lot of things to you. Mm -hmm. Because when you have that feeling for that, your uh, your country Legion or uh, your fatherland Legion, uh, it also have to give you a lot, not only take from you. That's true. And, um, and I, I think there... There are many, many ways of seeing that, but if you compare to a normal uh, army, mm. you know, people have a job in the army <clears throat> in any country, yeah. and 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 luckily, you know, they are they are um, they are most of the time in peace. Mm. Uh, luckily, most of the time, the Norwegian army, the French army, the British, army, any army, yeah. most of the time are in peace. The Legion has been in conflict since day one. Round the clock. Yeah, there has always been, a, maybe not a strong conflict, but there has always been a conflict going on. So the Legion has a lot of learned traditions growing from this. Mm -hmm. um, and and we'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. but, but to take something simple is that, so when a young man in an, any country joins the army uh, at six o'clock or at five o'clock, he's over, he goes home to his family yes, or or he goes on vacation to his family and all the group feeling that might have been created yeah. is gone. In the Legion it stays, you become a part of the yeah. pack. You you wake up at six o'clock in the morning and you basically are full time legionnaire until six o'clock at night and it continues. You don't go home. Yeah. It continues in the evening where it is your family. You stay with them together your leaders become your big brothers, become yeah, your fathers. With them, yeah, yeah, celebrate Christmas, every, not only Christmas, but actually your whole life. Yeah. And even when we go on operation, when we come back, we go out. We don't. We, most of us don't have a family, no. and and or it is it is absolutely wrong. Most of us have a family somewhere. That's quite <laughs> normal. But the legion has forged us into a situation where mainly we. We are staying together, so when we have a few days off, we will go a few days off together. Yeah, yeah. And we will spend our hard-earned money together, and we will go back, re-prepare, re-equip to a new operation or a new whatever. Mm. And this makes that you are part of a pack. Mm. And th th this, th this argument you says there, it's, uh, when people argue about who is the, like, uh, the best fighting army in the world, is it uh, Navy SEAL, whatever, the commitment a legionnaire does when he goes into that family is not any on the armors. Yeah. He does it like this because you go up and you give up all of your old life mm. and you start again. And But uh, if you go in the Norwegian army or American army, you still have family, you have lives, you go off. But the legionnaire, you are it. All the time. All so the time. we are back to my, 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 that's why I wanted to start in the desert with the monastery. Yes. It's, it's a monk soldier yeah. that is living his life. It's not a job. It's a way of life. It's a way of life. While in a normal Western society, we, we hire highly competent people to work in the army. But it's a work. And they have family. They're on and off mentally. And every second a soldier think about 
his wife, his girlfriend, his uncle, his family, what he's going to do. He's not thinking about the army. Mm-hmm. And every dangerous situation he comes into, he will think maybe about his family. Mm-hmm. My family, he's in the hole next to me or in the tank next to me. So the we are a part of a pack. I was trying to, I wouldn't yeah. say a wolf pack, that's a bit aggressive, but, but yeah. you, you're a part of a group and this is your, so it allows you to concentrate more. And compared to other units, you know, people like to, to, to compare the Legion with special forces. We are not, you know, SEAL teams are very highly, I mean, also Norwegian special forces, they're, they're highly educated specialists in their matter. Mm. Uh, the Legion is not, the Legion is normal military unit but a much higher dedication. And there is no secret. We have the same guns as the other French armors. Mm. We have the same uniforms. We have the same procedures. We have the same system. So the difference is not there. We don't run faster. We don't shoot better. But we do it very consistently with a lot of, I think the right word is dedication, dedication. as a part of the pack. And this is what, what is the main main difference. Mm. I. Personally, I've always felt this when we we came out. You know, been in many operations with with other militaries, and and of course they are they are often very good and very very relaxed. But I feel immediately nobody comes next to us when it makes the pieces falling into place. That's what's nice in the Legion is that yeah. clack 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 everything yeah, falls into place. Yeah, and it's not impressive. It's not a big thing. Is that all the details are because it's just a way of life. Yes, and then I go back to all this time in 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 um, in conflicts. You know, the the legion is is a society of of reality checks. Mm. So we go back and we think a bit about the legion is made up by hundred and forty ish nationalities, maybe a bit more. Quite impressive. There are people from all over the world. The leaders all come out. You know, the high level officer leaders, no, but all the NCOs and all the middle range leaders come up from the ranks. So we all start at zero. Yeah. And there is no way that you can lead these people without having credibility. So the leaders are exceptionally good and there is always a reality check. And this we will talk maybe later about the basic training where we can mm-hmm. start now is that you are always responsible. As a private legionnaire, you are responsible for what you're doing. Mm. And it will be reality checked immediately. Because we cannot afford that things go wrong. Mm. So, uh, I don't know, you and me, we often see the modern society where we see uh, our politicians Uh, and uh, our, our, we have a lot of intellectuals that are giving opinions about how wars should be made. They're not responsible, you know. So in the Legion, every job you will do or every duty you have is checked immediately because you are responsible and the guy who is responsible for you is going to check and everybody is checking because everybody is hold responsible. Yeah. yeah. So it's from very basic thing. If that flag should go up at seven o'clock in the morning, at it doesn't go up at six fifty nine mm. and it doesn't go up at seven oh one because there is a check. Because we have always been in conflict. We know that you have to adhere to everything to get it going. So if you go not click click click. Exactly. So everything is reality checked all the time. Yeah. And any leader that doesn't have the credibility of performing his tasks won't last. No. No. He will come pushing some papers some in the yeah. corner. Yeah. yeah. And but go ahead. Yeah uh, I, I pushed you forward. But we're back to the desert. Eighteen hundred. Yeah. yeah. Uh I, I get uh <laughs> I go go quickly in in front here, but uh, if you go back a little bit in uh, in the eighteen hundred the desert, the first uh, companies. Yeah. So, it. because did did uh, did the world know about the legion? Did they already get a rumor about them, or or did they get some status in uh, in the world yeah. ar- armies? Let, let, let's run through that. You know, don't forget the legion is created in eighteen thirty one, and it quickly, apart from the North African campaign where they occupy. 
mm. um, North Africa. They are involved in the war in Crimea in the 1850s. They are involved in the campaign in Mexico in the 1860s. They are involved in the French-Persian uh, War in 1870. Following that is a continuous um, um, colonization of the French, of the area we call Dahomey, which is Mali, Sub-Saharan Africa today, Madagascar in the Indian Ocean, Indochina being occupied by the French forces. All this is in the 1880s, 1890s. And while the pacification of, of, of North Africa continues, so the Legion is always present at these, these, uh, these battles and has quickly earned itself a reputation as a hardworking force because, well, we already explained, uh, yeah, that's... They You're stick more with, active than the Vikings. Yes. They're they everywhere. St- they stick together and they get the job done. So they get themselves quite a reputation. We come into the 20th century... Uh, where the legion remains present in in North Africa, of course, but also in Indochina. We get the First World War. Mm -hmm. As you know, France had a lot of foreigners. France uh, has always uh, called itself, uh, we call it in French, terre d'asile. That means foreigners are welcome in France. So a lot of foreigners will uh, join the legion. uh, Poets, writers, artists uh, will join the Legion at the at the start of the First World War, and the Legion will participate in the in the First World War, um, and this uh, this creates uh, a very strong presence in the in the in the French society. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, we are starting to get the the information that is harsh. Uh, because uh, you also know the press starts to, you know, we're in the you know, 1800s, yes, you know, yes, we yes. get the daily uh, press. So we start to get the stories and people learn about this. And the Legion hasn't got any interest of stopping it because it, the Legion mm. sees it as good advertisement. And, and so that's where we end up with the films in the 1930s and the 50s with the Legionnaires marching in the in the desert and yeah. yeah and the legion used this to create uh what we call you know all these are social constructions you, you are aware of what a social construction is that means these are things we create to to make it real like laws yeah. we write something on a paper and some politician signs and becomes reality <laughs> yeah, so uh, social construction. Not yeah. far from what you experience today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, so it is an idea to create a myth, a reputation, and to create something to hang. You need to, all this tradition to hang it on. Let me give you a good example. Um, I, I, I belong to, for, for, for most of my time in the Legion, I belong to the, the first cavalry regiment in the Legion, which is a, 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 a light armored reconnaissance regiment. The best one? Uh, by far. By we'll come far. back to that. We'll, we'll come back to that <laughs> easily. Uh, remind me to explain you the difference with the Paras. So, you know, yeah, we, yeah. we will get comment on that in the section, yeah. so it will be interesting. But um, so the, the cavalry regiment in the Legion which is uh, then, as I said, uh, uh, reconnaissance or, you know, desert, long-range reconnaissance regiment, was created in 1921. That's late. late, And it was set up mainly by Russians because a lot of Russians came to France after uh, after the First World War and the revolution in Russia, so what we call white Russians, so we're against the Bolsheviks. So the regiment was set up mainly by Russians, and Russians were forming the, the base of the regiment for the first 20, 30 years. And this was a way of taking a tradition, hanging it on. The regiment was immediately sent to Morocco. It was uh, My first squadron was third squadron. It was in Morocco. Another After the First World War, you know, France got uh, control over what is uh, by them. Um, Traité de Versailles or whatever it was, the Traité with the Turks uh, that lost the war, um, got the control over what today is Syria and Lebanon, and the United Kingdom got control over what is Iraq and Jordan and uh, Israel today. So my regiment immediately becomes involved in, in, in operations in Syria and Morocco at the same time, spread around us as a cavalry unit. 
So by building immediately a reputation on our Russian heritage, uh, a few famous uh, officers doing things. So, so we create a story. Um, and you also have a lot of songs and you have a lot of traditions. Absolutely, you, all these quite things. Quite highly. Yeah, all these, all these, um, these traditions are all made in the way of uniting you. I'm bringing you back to the monastery. Monastery, okay. yeah, yeah. Our nation, our family, our togetherness. When I arrived as a, as a, as a, as a young legionnaire in, in, in my squadron in, in the First Reich, it's full of pictures from all the battlefields and hundreds of people in a corridor. So, wow, who is this? Oh, they're all dead. And they're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so With all, our, he all history. our heroes. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah. Heroes and is quite important to have, you know. It, it creates a belonging. Yeah. You want to adhere. I, I want to tell uh, the story about Captain Solomyski, yeah. uh, who was a white Russian. And um, when I was a young, very young legionnaire, I was always corporal sergeant, I can't remember, very young. Yeah. Um, this guy had been in the First World War on the Russian side, joined the uh, French Foreign Legion in 21 as a young lieutenant. And... Um, He was the last uh, French officer to charge, I think, in Syria. Uh, in 1936, he made an attack by horse right back and with swords. Yeah, apparently, was the last attack. But he will join in the in the in the mid 80s, when uh, when we were in uh, in our arrangement. He will come as a retired oh. to see us, and he would create amazing parties. He was over 90 years old, but he would come full of energy, and show up in the squadron and yeah um, giving these speeches and and yeah he's the only guy i have seen who can put uh, six seven champagne bottles up and chop them up with uh with a sword within a few seconds yeah. from several meters away so he's uh and i heard i i didn't i didn't participate in this usual but he was living in the legion old age home uh, outside marseille And uh, he would go with his friend. He had a friend, I think he was a German. And every day, they got every month, they got their pension. And they would travel to Monaco, to the casino. And they would play all their money and drink all their money in two days. And uh, when they were broke, they would go back to the old days. They're over 90 years old. <laughs> Or they will come to the unit and drink us under the table. So uh, why I'm saying it, it might sound silly, crazy old man. Yes, but... These are tools you use to make a belonging to the unit. Mm. Uh, something to look up to. Something to look up to and say, I am a part of this. Part of this thing that was created in 1921, yeah. that went through all these wars, that fought in the Second World War. We were there, there, there. And I say we. I mean, yeah. my father wasn't even born. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And But the, the bloodlines is running through the, the, the units. Blo exactly, the so blonde line is kept. So you have a strong belonging. You have so you feel like it's, it's your D part of your DNA. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I remember as a corporal when we, we would go out, you know, uh, we would go out in, in uniforms at night when we go out for a drink and there is 15 creases in the shirt and it's a hard job. Mm. But that's the whole point. Yes, and you have to sacrifice to be a corporal in the third squadron. You have, it is a sacrifice. It's not free to be a corporal. So you have to sacrifice by having a spotless uniform. Yeah. And it would be a shame, a shame and a loss to your credibility yeah. if you show up at the gate to leave out and then the officer day would say, why does your uniform look like a mess? What, what squadron are you from? So you cannot allow that, you have to. So all these are, can look to ordinary people as silly, but. There are very important things that brings you into this family of togetherness is a very fancy word, but yeah. yeah, you belong. You belong and the bloodline is there and you are completely convinced of your dedication to the system. And then no family, it never stops. And you come into this monastery rhythm, which is a fantastic life, which is simple. It's a completely problem-free life. You know exactly what you're going to do, mm. what is expected, and you don't have to worry about tax, about wives, about uh, anything, mm. anything. And it's quite funny, actually. It's a, it's a lovely life. I think uh, that, um, 
Germans have a word. It's a, a broederbond, brother in arms, mm-hmm. or it's, mm. uh, and that's quite strong for you guys because, as you told, you have a credibility, and if you're gonna have like a, a broederbond or a brother in arms, you actually, ha- if you're gonna be a brother, like this, you have to prove yourself. Exactly, you are hundred percent. You cannot be ninety nine percent and believe somebody gonna want to be your brother. You have to be 100%. Yeah, and and then we go back to, I, I, I'm quite convinced that, that we are still Stone Age people and that a lot of our, our um, a lot of our mental mental situations are based on Stone, stone Age belonging. And, and men are motivated different than women. Mm-hmm. Um, but men want status and belonging because that's what gives us survival. It has been like this for millions of years on the on the savanna, and the young man that arrive thrives for belonging and status. How do you get belonging? By getting credibility, and it's the same thing with the status. Mm. More status you get, better leader, better, or even not being a leader but being good at your work gives you a very high status in the legion because there is a pride of being a private legionnaire who does his job correctly and it's it's get favored he get hauled forward and he's a part of the pack this yeah. pack that doesn't stop like in the other army you can train them to me and then you go on holiday or you go on weekend and you go home to your wife and then there is a rupture this doesn't happen in the legion no. so we have and a very very harsh um strong rhythm you know of his exercise or guard duty, or preparation for a mission, mission, come back, little bit of vacation, and back on the same cycle. So it never stops. Never stops. And it's a great life. It's a great life. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You don't regret a day? Ah, not one second. <laughs> not one second. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, it's, it's, um, it's it's a difficult like physically, but mentally it's very rewarding and mm. very uh, very uh, uh, yeah. It's a happy life. happy life, simple life. Yeah, complex but simple in the same time. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. and I hope it's it's understandable for our listeners. I'm trying to be as simple as possible, but uh, yeah. But from from uh, from the get go, uh, from uh, early 1800, and we come out in the 1900, and. Um, and uh, the legion is evolving in, in the way they uh, do the combats and build up the groups. But when did the legion start to change to be the legion it's today? When, 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 because we had Second World War II, and always a lot of German soldiers went into the to uh, to the legion, and uh, and you got a lot of comp- um, people who was experience with war and mm. but when when did it start so, to evolve to do, to what we see today so yeah you know the earlier there used to be a lot fewer nationalities because uh, travel was not available to the same extent and and the legion is always um, an image of the world society yeah it so always it's like a mirror yeah it's yeah. a mirror of of the world society i i uh, I think I told before, I'm not sure, but when I joined in the middle 80s, it was, uh, you know, or we can go back to the Second World War. After the Second World War, uh, Germany loses the war, mm. um, and the, the the French continue their colonial wars, first in Indochina from 1945 to 1954. Indochina is that we call Vietnam today? Yeah, is that yeah. what we call Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos? Yes, yeah. Indochina. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Indochina and is there. Was a lot of conflict in that area. That oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 That um, and it was straight after Second World War Two. Absolutely, it started immediately. There, no break. <laughs> there is a lot of no, and and it was a harsh war. Uh, in nine years, from 1945 to 1954, the French Foreign Legion sent 30,000 legionnaires to Indochina. 30,000. 10,000 died. That's one in three. So that's a lot. That's a lot uh, of people. That's a lot. Yeah. What, was that uh, of the death force? Is a lot of uh, from illness and sickdom or no. accident or was war? War. Yeah. 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 So this was the first time uh, a Western army uh, was confronting uh, the communist concept. Yeah. Uh, where 
life had no value at all. So uh, the Legion could fight very well. Uh, the most best example is probably the Amdian Fu, where they were put in a horrible situation. Mm. Uh, but there were just a few thousands, and the enemy were 10,000 or 10 times more mm. and ready to lose. Their leadership was ready to lose. So you cannot win that. It's not possible. If you just pump hordes uh, up the hill at one stage, you run out of ammunition. But um, oh, there are millions of books or thousands of books written about the Indochina war. I wouldn't consider my an expert neither on the political or the technical uh, aspects of this war, but it was a very, very good. Um, uh, it was a rough time for the legionnaires who was fighting oh yeah, there. It was a rough time. As I said, one in three died. And most of them are Germans, of course. Mm -hmm. Quite a few Norwegians. There, there is some some documentation on it. Yeah, uh, mainly Norwegians that came out on the wrong side during the war. Yeah, yeah. and um, <laughs> from uh, from my regiment, from the cavalry regiment, a uh, lot of Germans. We have twenty two squadrons in in the Indochina War, so it was a huge regiment. Mm. Most of the times, the 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 documentation that I have seen from those days are in German because. The leaders were German, yeah. so uh, and and uh, a lot of the Mars songs, you no, know, everything is some is like of uh, course, of course, German. Uh, I, I, as a recruit, I learned and learned to sing songs in German without speaking <laughs> French. Uh, <laughs> it's quite an experience <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning, naked in the woods. Uh, that's another story. Uh, and uh, after after. Um, <laughs> It is motivating. After the, <laughs> it is motivating. Yeah, <laughs> you. It wakes you up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You're amazed what you can learn when you are naked in the wood at four o'clock in the morning. Single and germs. Haven't, <laughs> haven't haven't slept for three days. Yeah. It's you. Then you. you it's another concept of concentration. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the end of the Indochina War, they actually overlapping more or less. But the the the, the war of um, of Algeria of decolonization oh, yeah. of Algeria. Yeah. Yeah which ends in disaster because the French are winning military in the war, but it, it, the times of colonies are over and it ends in the military coup because they are winning the war, but the politician says stop. So mm. yeah, mm. another political issue that I'm not a specialist on, but... Uh, it was a rough time for the for the Indian, yeah. Uh, well, at the end, yeah, luckily yeah. we survived. Um, a lot we can have a whole podcast on that. Yeah, well, there was a lot of people died there too, yeah. Yeah, they oh. had they had time to time heavy losses, much less than Indochina. Indochina was the biggest yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you know the Indochina was a war where the enemy had a lot of uh, assets. Mm. China and the Soviet Union could provide limitless, endless. Yeah. yeah, it's the same problem that the Americans faced uh, a decade later. Mm. But I would like because people are, are quite happily. Uh, like to discuss uh, the, the strength of uh, different armies and, and groups, whatever, yeah. But so the listener can understand the the mindset of a proper legionnaire. Could you tell the listeners the story about uh, the Mexican? Captain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because so, that, that's for yeah. me. I get goosebumps, you know, because oh. that's yeah, legion for me. It's it's a part of our of our foundation is the story of the battle and and it describes very well um the legion what we what we would call the legion ethos the the whole mindset and and this is from the campaign uh in uh, mexico in 1863 uh the legion is a part of of the french campaign there to whatever i'm not uh, going to go into politics about that uh, operation either but we are it's 160 years ago 100 and yeah, almost oh, 160 no. years ago and um uh, as a part of the battle, uh, the Legion uh, is uh, given the order to escort a convoy mm. uh, over from A to B. Let's not go into all the details. But the Legion has already engaged all the units, uh, the combat units in battle. Yes. Okay. So uh, they have to, in order to fulfill this mission, this duty, they have to uh, do what we call forming compagnie de marche. They have to create an ad hoc company, 
which they do by on taking the yeah with taking the cooks and the guys who were keeping the horses and the guys from the stores and and so on they take the officers from the offices so it's the flag bearer is the master payer it's the chief administrative officer these I mean so they made a, a, a ad hoc company which they send off to to escort this convoy um and this convoy has then gold food uh, all the materials and it's it's quite vital and and the legion is then set off to escort and on the morning of the uh, uh, 30th of uh, april 1863 at five in the morning uh, at daylight uh, the legion has just you know they have been marching the whole night with the convoy and they run into a contact by, by close to a place called uh, cameron cameron in uh, in, uh, in mexico and they are running into um, a large Mexican cavalry force of around 2,000 people on horse and unknown people on by foot. And the captain, which was the uh, Captain Danjou, uh, was leading the French, uh, French forces, uh, knows that he, he cannot uh, engage this force uh, with ever. But the terrain is slightly favorable, and uh, there is a little hacienda called it is Cameron, and he decides that if he can fix the enemy and send the convoy away, and if he can hold the enemy there, the convoy can get away. So he sends the convoy away with a small detachment. So for him, the missions is the first. Yeah. Get the convoy in safety. Yes. So he knows that he has to occupy uh, the Mexicans for a certain number of hours. So they cannot surrender. Yeah. They will have to fight, which they do. They fight uh, very strongly for how 16 many, hours. How many men was it? There were 63 men. 63 men. Yeah, against 2,000. <laughs> and adults. Uh, adults. Uh, Captain Danjou is killed quite quickly. And the battle goes on the whole day. And of course, I was not present. It was poor amount of time. But the whole idea was that the Mexicans were getting more and more frustrated of not being able to beat them. And that gives more time to the convoy to get away. Uh, and uh, and their, their captain or their colonel Milan, I think his name was, uh, was sort of getting excited. Uh, and finally, after 16 hours, makes a, a major attack uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on this hacienda where only five legionaries were. Hacienda is like a small farm. Yeah, yes. there must have been. You know, I've, I've seen paintings, but I don't know really. Oh, yeah, yes, so yeah. So they were holding on there, just occupying them. And in the end, we have just five legionaries left alive. Five of 63. Yeah, five of 63. And they, they instead of defending, they charge in and attack. So they just fix bayonets? And charge in, yes. So they, um, well, I wasn't present. But they basically, uh, the Mexican uh, colonel, so impressed by their bravery, just get them clubbed down, arrest them, and allows them to keep their guns as prisoners. Because uh, he says, uh, on refuse rien des hommes comme vous. We, we can't refuse anything of men like you. Okay? So all this is, is battle history. The point is that it wasn't the sharp edge It was the legionnaires, the legionnaires from the monastery, mm -hmm. the cooks, the, you know, that went in, did Sold. the battle, yeah, solved the battle, fought the battle, and the point was not to win the battle, the point was to get the convoy to safety, which mm -hmm. it did. So this is one of our founding uh, stories. But your captain had a prosthetic arm, didn't he? Yes, he has uh, had, yes, and yeah. um, which was lost in the battle, found years later, and it's today, you can see it in our museum in uh, in Aubagne, outside Marseille, if you go and visit. In uh, Aubagne, yeah? Yes, 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 they have the Legion Museum there, and we have a sort of a cryptic area where uh, where, uh, where all the names of uh, the officers killed during the, all the wars since 1860, since 1831, and his uh, his wooden hand is one of our relics that we bring out every year on the parade for the uh, yeah. come on the yeah. 30th of april the holy grail oh it's the holy grail mm -hmm. by far by far yeah but it's um it's a very important it's to a remember symbol yeah yeah it's it's all about symbolism symbolism of devotion to the duty devotion to the mission even if it takes uh a lot what is important that's what is important to remember is 
the mission mm-hmm. has to be filled. Mm-hmm. Winning, losing battle, my life, your life, though all those things are less important. What is important is to fulfill the mission. What is expected of me? Mm. Well, to get the convoy to safety. Mm. How do I do it? Well, by sacrificing whatever necessary. It's like uh, like a, a big group of ants. Exactly. Working in team, you know. And an uh, ant doesn't really care if it gets stepped on and killed mm-hmm. as long as it's Exactly. The group That's the survive. whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So this is the strength of the Legion, and, and it, 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 it makes one of our founding, we, we call it, uh, if we were talking about uh, anthropology and, and things like this, we would call it an existential myth. Mm. And and we have the same in, you know, uh, in, in Norway with the Harald Holfag or other things, you know. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So these are the foundations of our of our society and devotion to, to a system. But back to Indochina and Algeria, uh, in what way did those two major wars uh, shape the Legion? Well, I think uh, it shaped the Legion in a way that um, it was the last uh large uh, wars going on in the colonial this is the end of the colonial war period when, when all the legionnaires was expendables yes and don't forget uh the legion enters the war in 1939 mm. and it exits the war in 1962 yeah so for 23 years flat they were in war flat, flat out but heavy heavy war yeah so the people that comes out of that comes up to a more peacetime in brackets operation and the legion after the military coup was heavily reorganized mm. a lot of the units was moved to france because we had to leave algeria because algeria became independent uh. and they became a uh, more um, intervention military yeah so it becomes part of the f- you know the quick reaction forces of the french army mm. and they get after this in the late 60s and 70s more become the the configuration we have today also international travel begins so uh, more people can come you know uh, in 1952 there were not many japanese legionnaires now there are quite a few yeah uh, things like that and and we see also that uh, the conflict doesn't stop because Chad becomes unstable. So Chad is often visited by Uruguay in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s. The 80s follows the war in Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon have a, you know, a large extent, a lot of minor conflicts in Africa where France have uh, defense alliances with the with the new governments, and interventions are done there in Djibouti and anywhere and. Towards the end of the, the, the 80s, we will see the evolution, the fall of the wall. So then we have new conflicts coming up um, in, in ex-Yugoslavia, uh, in Somalia, in Cambodia. The Legion went back there in, in the 1990s. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, in United Nations, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1993, I think. Was it Pol Pot time then? Uh, after, 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 I think there was more a mind cleaning. Yeah, uh, okay, because Paul, Paul Pot one did he uh, fall? Ooh, you're, sure, yeah. you're outside my yeah, framework. But, but I think I think uh, Kambucha was like uh, heavily communist or or Khmer mm-hmm. run all the way up to about 2000, I think. 99, 2000? I'm sure in 1993 we were there. There was not Pol Pot now. No, 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 not uh, Pol Pot, but, no. but the, the, the government. Yeah, was, I would know. It, I uh, would yeah, know. Yeah. There was a United Nations uh, mission. I, w- I was there in uh, 2000, and mm-hmm. uh, the papers would get inside the country then was not uh, not very easy. Not simple. And, uh, no, and, uh, and uh, many of the areas I went to, mm-hmm. they have never seen wine people before. Mm-hmm. So I experienced like uh, small kids just falling off the bike when they see me and stuff, you know, and just sitting like this with my skin. Suddenly you feel like Tom Cruise. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the other shitload of, uh, as we talk about the, the mine situation there is quite mm. heavily. So a lot of the floating village mm. out there, yeah. Mm. So, so it's crazy. Yeah, crazy. I think it was, I, I was not there those days. My my unit was in Somalia. So I did not participate, participate in the, in Cambodia. So I'm sure somebody did in the comment section, they will put it. But, but uh, even today, uh, the legionary is stationed around the world. Mm. Uh, how many camps do you have with uh, ten? Ten. Mm. So, I wanted to go back okay. quickly, yeah. quickly, and and so after the war. So, so to give you an example, when I joined in the mid ninety, mid eighties, um, yeah. 
it was That's 10 a years. time ago, my young friend. Oh, there. <laughs> Jesus, don't talk about this. But you still look handsome. Uh, I was still young, handsome, yeah, and getting yes. better and better yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah. inshallah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, when and I, I joined... a beautiful soul as well. Yes, yes. Uh, good heart, yeah. good heart. You know, I'm getting a bit weird by age, but that's how it is. <laughs> 19 mid mid 80s it is 10 years after the end of the uh Angola and Angola what do I say the Portuguese colonial wars okay so they ended in 1974 i think the war in Mozambique and in Angola so uh 10 years later in the legion all the leaders are portuguese <laughs> so mirror of the society that's what i wanted yeah. to get to yeah uh so i joined there was a few brits that had been in the falkland wars uh, it went on, and when the wall fell, uh, it was suddenly all the Eastern Europe and the Russians arrived, and it has reshaped the legion enormously. Yeah. Because today, um, even with 140 nationality, uh, a lot of the people, of course, now we are 30 years since the wall has fallen. So the big leaders of the legion today come from Eastern Europe and, 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 and Russia, because they have been there a long time, and they are from that generation. Mm. So uh, yeah, this is the effect of uh, of the society evolving. Yes, but I think it's a myth, you know, because uh, because from the old days when when they recruited people, you know, and and they uh, took in uh, whoever want to come and would uh, commit the life for for mm -hmm. the legion. But today, the people who are volunteering. In, in and walk in the gate in uh, in uh, in uh, outside Marseille or Bagne, they are highly educated. Many people, and it's 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 a lot of people from quite good uh, standards. So 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 it's it's not uh, today. Maybe it's not uh, like the the um, the outcast of the society in the same way as before. Or mm. am I wrong? No, no, you're 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 completely right. And and actually had always been that they are still you know let's go back and think about it behind behind every legionnaire there is a failure mm. it's hard to say but there's a failure uh, i come from a normal norwegian family uh, if i was as good a school as i should have been uh, i would have been an airline captain today yeah. as i wanted yeah uh, but I'm not an airline captain. I'm an ex-legionnaire because um, mistakes in my youth uh, brought me to the legion. Yeah. And not big mistakes, but um, basically I was fascinated and thought uh, that could be a good idea. And uh, and there I was. Did so, you read any books and stuff? Yeah, I read a book. There was a fantastic book in Norwegian. It came out in the early 80s, and yeah. I think that's the one who gave me. I didn't think they will take me. I just went there for fun, and suddenly, <laughs> <laughs> suddenly, ah, <laughs> you have done 15 years. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the Legion have always taken people of all kinds of society. The problem is uh, there is a hard selection process Very because hard. we get... As I said, 140, 145 nationality can come 24 hours per day can come. There is a very harsh selection process. And before, as I said, in, you know, last century, maybe they wasn't looking too hard when they needed 1,000. But today you can choose and pick. Today you can choose and pick. And today world travel has made people available, you know, makes the legion available to, from people from all over the world. Mm. And the legion has soon 200 years experience in picking and choosing. So I know from experience that it will say, this guy, he's educated, we'll take him in and we'll take this guy, which is a bit uh, not so educated and we'll put them together and we'll make an excellent team and they construct it up like this. So it's of course, it doesn't always work. Uh, it's a bit of a lottery, yeah. but um, <laughs> but the experience sure helps. Oh yeah, I I I, um, I once went to 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 corporal course, and 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 we are sort of teamed up, uh, and I'm teamed up with a very good friend of mine. He's, he's a friend today, even many many years later, we became friends, and he told me I can't read and write. I said okay. Um, 
we'll manage. <laughs> we'll manage. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Yeah. And and this guy is, he's a machine. He's from Brazil, um, but he's a physical machine and 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 a hardworking guy and not not big but strong. He can carry anything. He can do anything. He can climb ten meters of rope, uh, half asleep. Uh, really, really strong. And and. Yeah, he was telling me stories, you know, I, I, maybe I told before, but we had our first Christmas in the Legion together, and I was sort of saying, oh, we're away from our family. <laughs> I was still young. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he says, you know, you know, uh, Charlie, he said, my mother was a prostitute. Mm-hmm. We never used to live more than a month in a house, and... Usually I got kicked out three times per night. Oh, fuck me. And Christmas for me was not an event. Uh, <laughs> you, you imagine, uh, 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 you know, he says, I, I'm a real you know, son of a bitch, as he was saying, you know. <laughs> and then he says, this is great. This is great. Yeah. So you can imagine how much he, he adhered to the system and how much he helped me to yeah. adhere to the system. Yeah. And together, you know, uh, he was so much better physically than me, yeah. but I could read the map really good, which was for him was a miracle. <laughs> we never got lost. Yeah. <laughs> so these teamworks were built up, and we 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 became a very very strong team. And even today, soon forty years later, we have contact, and he's doing fine. And the the thing building team we talked about before mm. the podium mm. when, you, when you put up a security team, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes you can have one strong guy there, but he doesn't function alone. You exactly. Need to Put another type and together, yeah. it's dynamite. Exactly, that's exactly but the alone. Point. Yeah, it's harmless. Yeah. So, so back to the, the 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 legion recruitment system. So, this allows them to to pick and choose, and and you have people coming today that are of such a level. Mm. Um, I, I suspect that the last two or three months there have been a a decrease in the number of Russian. Uh, candidates, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe they're still coming. But I know from experience that we had certain weeks where where uh, where we get uh, get guys coming. Uh, I remember five guys coming from Kazakhstan. Um, they have all been in in the Kazakh military. They were uh, young captains, old lieutenants. They're late twenties. They have an engineer education. Of course, an engineer education from, from their country, it's not necessarily a top engineer education, but they know math, physics, and basics, and, 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 and they understand how to study things. Mm. They're physically fit, mm. very fit. Uh, on a Cooper test, which is running 12 minutes, they would do 3,600 meters. Oh, yeah, they're fast. They're fit, they're strong, they're violent, their society is much more violent than than so they are aggressive. Yeah. You know, in their society, and if you want to keep a girlfriend when you are sixteen, you have to beat up two, three guys. So, uh, it's another society. Uh, and so, of course, the young boy from a Norwegian suburb that shows up, uh, he hasn't got a chance. Eaten alive. He does. He but he cannot do the. Ma- well, he would do so much worse in the math test, or the psychotechnical test. <clears throat> Sorry, he will do so much worse on the physical tests. He will do so much worse on the aggressivity tests. Mm. Well, so we'll take these guys. And the key to success is how do we master them? Because they're not easy. Mm-hmm. And so that's what the Legion does. It takes in these people that that has the 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 wish, the will to to be a part. And and the other problem with the modern Western society is that if we take this young imaginary Norwegian again, yeah, yeah. he doesn't really need the legion. No. Because if he doesn't like it, well, he can go home. Problem, yeah. These guys come from Kazakhstan. They have fuck all. <laughs> come for nothing. <laughs> yeah. And the idea of making maybe uh, 1,500, 2,000 euro per month is very interesting. It's much, much more than they ever made before. And they even get a, a France passport. After and they get a, a French passport after a while. So the motivation is strong. Big time. Yeah. And you get people preparing all over the world. You know, if you if you prepare for years in your mountain in Nepal, we have a lot of Nepalese in the Legion. They they are very dedicated because it's not you know they came from far away and they, it's their bet over the life. Mm-hmm. So when they join, they know what they want. They don't want to quit. And they need the belonging. Mm-hmm. 
And I go back to this. They want to be a part of the pack. Yeah. And this pack that goes on, that doesn't stop after work, that doesn't stop in the weekend, that doesn't stop in the vacation. We go into a group and we work as a group and we become... The right word is not a family because it, it creates a long idea. It is a family, but not a family. Mm -hmm. So we work together and that's what makes the strength of the Legion. Mm -hmm. And the reality check, mm -hmm. that we are being reality checked all the time. Mm -hmm. There is no place for bullshit because <laughs> the, the, yeah, yeah. it comes out immediately. And that, I think those are the things that bring the Legion in to be one of the best fighting forces. Mm -hmm. um, About this recruiting uh, in, in the middle or something in the 90s, I, uh, I showed up uh, in a bang on the gate and uh, recruited. You missed the, me. Yeah, <laughs> not by many days, I think. Yeah. <laughs> But... Uh, i went i went uh, by myself i mm. should go recruit in in paris or something and then go together with other but i, I come mm. alone in the gate mm. and it took like one hour and i'm back on the street again yeah he, he didn't even want to consider me yeah i know why we have spoken about it yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah, so, that, so that was a short process for me it was a bad choice from the legion i'm sorry <laughs> I, will, I, will, no, but, i will make a complaint yeah but i, I think maybe i could get a shot Maybe I didn't uh, fit for it, but maybe I get a better shot if I come with 50 or 100 other guys in at the same time. But I come alone, and, and this uh, corporal come, and he did, oh, you, bam, bam, thank you, man, straight out. You, know? you, you would have met the same corporal in Paris. <coughs> yeah. I, I would suggest anybody who wants to join, mm. don't go anywhere else. Go straight to Oban. Go straight to Oban, yeah. Yes, go straight to Oban, join at 10 o'clock in the morning, dressed, shaved, with as little stuff as possible, mm. and preferably on the 21st of December. Then we have the best chance. That's the best chance, yeah. Yep. I remember I had uh, just a small backpack uh, with one clean underwear, nothing, no money, no. I just left everything. That's good. So, That's so, how we like them. Yeah. <laughs> It was a short, short uh, experience <laughs> for me. Short career, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And 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 what's following this 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 strict selection person is a very interesting. Um, uh, have we got 25 minutes to talk for about? Sure, yeah. Sure. Nah. Um. The training, the basic training. Um, yeah. Once more, I have to take a little, you know, I have to get rid of a few myths. Yeah. And you, I, I think everybody, even if you know nothing about, about military life, it, it, it's a bit obvious that you cannot take people from all over the world, even if they are physically fit, speaking all kinds of languages, all kinds of religions, cultural backgrounds, social background, education levels. You cannot put these together and then in a few weeks make elite soldiers. No, you don't start with training them in explosives or flying helicopters or doing fantastic things. So the basic training in the Legion would last four months, 16 weeks, is But very basic. Can you take us through your experience? Yeah. <laughs> My experience is when when, you, when and you, you can tell me uh, from the first day you went inside and well, because that that's a good way to explain the the basic training. Yeah. So um, I was quite atypical. Uh, <coughs> I got through the system. Um, as you know, I was I was uh, over a decade later. I was in charge of the of the security services. Yeah for this operation, so I, I got to see my own file, and uh, my interview uh, in the security went very bad. <laughs> uh, I remember these strong sergeants, you know, asking me silly questions, uh, trying to answer my best, and I saw his conclusions later in my file, says uh, he's a spoiled, useless little prat, so that he won't last three weeks, but since he has does, doesn't done anything wrong, let's give him a chance. <laughs> Luckily, he was dead by then. <laughs> well, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, when you when you when you join the legion and go through the process, um, I think we have to understand that the goal of the legion is to make you, from a technical perspective, be able to understand about four hundred words of French, mm -hmm. know how to uh, be a basic soldier. That means. 
you know when to wake up. You understand basic orders. You know what uniform to put on, what uniform to not put on. You learn the basics of daily life in the Legion camp. You learn the very, very basics of combat, but not much. And very, very basic things about transmission, navigation, uh, first aid. Uh, thing. There is very bit. The whole thing we try to do in the Legion is to create the foundations of this future monk. Yeah. in the system. So we are going to take people in and we are going to break them down. Uh, not because they are not because they are um, uh, not as we see in films. Okay? Um, you take all these people together and you put them under pressure. And and that's where many people are surprised because it doesn't happen like in the films. But the films is completely different. You're you're selling a story, you know, so it has nothing to do with military life. And the idea is that to reduce over time with hard work, with boredom, with high levels of requests, with an never letting go of the pressure twenty four hours a day, break you down together with your fellow uh, comrades that just arrived from all over the world until you realize that you are completely useless. Mm. You are useless, but your friends are also useless. Together. As a together. Group. Not as an individual. No, the individual goes out of the window because he's not a part of the foundation. And that's where I think modern society has based too much on in the individual, but that's another discussion. So when you walk in the gate, yeah. your individual goes out yeah. and the groups come in. The groups come in, you become, so they will take make this pack that they will destroy. Mm. The other thing we do, we try to, uh, you know, we all have a immune, immune system, yeah. huh? where we are more or less resistant to, to, to bacterias, different bacteria, pathogens and all that. So. I, I always like to say that the Legion also put a very, very hard effort on working on your own, on your cognitive immune system. Yeah, your mental. Because system. people come from everywhere in the world with all kinds of experience and all kinds of different levels of tolerance for a lot of things. For your reaction. Yeah. And some are aggressive, some are not, somebody have seen a lot, somebody have seen nothing. and some. So this is a part of the breaking down process where we reduce them that everybody is as low as possible. And we do that by not putting them in the classroom and giving them PowerPoint presentations on how the world should be. Uh, the training regiment is set up in, in Casanova in uh, south uh, west of France. And it's basically made up by different farms. The Legion has bought farms around in the countryside. And this new pack of 40 to 50 legionnaires that arrive from the recruitment center that has been integrated, they are sent out to a farm. The farm is in a way this, this fort in the desert mm. from the 100 years ago, completely isolated from the rest of the world. And that's where they learn that you don't sleep, you work, mm. you run, you cook, you clean, you repair, you make everything yourself. And it is not that it's so difficult, but it goes on all the time. There is always constant. a pressure, constant pressure, constant pressure, constant cooking, pressure. Cooking. Yeah. yeah, all the time. It goes on for day and night, several weeks. Tender and, the meat. Yes, and, and, and you don't realize when you're going through it at all. You think, oh, this is boring, or this is not boring, or I'm suffering, I'm not suffering. It's very individual. But at the end of the day, you come out with a different perception of the world. And especially, we need to have brutality and shock in order to improve the cognitive immune system. That's why we don't have, uh, or we have very, very little PTSD in the Legion. Very few Legionnaires has problems after the Legion. Mm. And I always wondered why. And 
many years of experience, I think we can say we are well prepared. Yeah. Our cognitive immune system are made that when we finally get to the battle zone, we don't get the problems after because they are assimilated during training Over with time. a harsh life, always under pressure, always, I wouldn't say extreme situations, but always under pressure. Yeah. Always under pressure, and you realize that okay, now I've been, I've been picking up cigarette butts in a little corner behind the old farm building for three hours, and somebody comes out and says, "Oh, good, that's who, now you're going to do something else. Now you're going to clean the toilet. You're going to clean the toilet, okay, but not." You know, and then you get out from there. Okay, now we're going for a run, and then you go for a run, and then you get a shower. There's no shower, and then and, you know, now you have to go learn how to use the gun, and you know, then you go to night duty, and it goes on forever, forever. So you change out the the traditional hell week. You change it out with like not that intensive, but longer period with pressure. It's going to change, yeah, because the hell week. They say it's psychology, that's what they call the usual train. But now we are in the Western world. Mm. They take you and they test you physically. Mm. You can be very strong physically, but mentally weak. Mm. And that's the weakness of the modern society in the West, in my opinion, but yeah. that's just and me. And you cannot find that uh, mental weakness in one week. You need more time, more pressure. Yeah, and, and it's basic training. It's just the basic first stones. Yes. It takes years to build the Legionnaire. Mm. So th that <clears throat> basic training is just a way of, of getting you, uh, let me just check that again, everything, yeah. To get you into the basic vision and with this pressure that goes on all the time, we teach you the basic stuff, okay? How to brush your teeth, how to make your shoes, how to understand basic orders, how to get 400 years of words of friends into your head. Uh, how to how to operate your gun, which is very simple. So this goes on for four months, mm. and it's a high pressure operation, uh, not not physically. Any young man can in, do it. Yes, if he yes, wants, yeah. yeah. So don't think that you have to train so much. That's not the problem. The problem is keeping on doing it all mm. the time, mm. with very limited sleep, very limited relaxation, and under constant pressure. In a language you don't understand. Mm with people from another planet. My my uh, partner was from Senegal. Um, my my basic French in the beginning was very, very much of an African accent. <laughs> But, uh, well, <laughs> it got well out after a while. Yeah. Excellent guy. We still have contact today also, 40 years later. Yeah. And um, so that's why I wanted to emphasize that the basic training is just the foundation a very basic foundation. You know how to go on the shooting range mm. and shoot safely your gun on the shooting range mm. and to take it apart and clean it and put it together. Mm. That's very basic. But that's where you have to start. And we start with the foundation all the time. Mm. And then uh, it's not that the Legion shoots so much better than the other. I mean, the SEALs would come in with fantastic guns and shoot at 800 meter. Legion, no. No, we kill at 300, mm. always. Mm. Doesn't matter. Every round at 300 meter is a kill. Mm. And it doesn't matter if you are the cook, the or the truck driver, or the plumber. Mm. Every round should hit at 300 meters. And your reputation your status, your belonging to this selective club, this monastery, this brotherhood, mm. this church, if you want, mm. is dependent on you able to keep in that so serious that every time you pick up a gun at 300 meters, it's a hit. Yeah. If you sleep or not, you're gonna hit. Yes, and when you take that out and put it into the battleground, That is one of the many things that makes that it works. Because we don't, you know, no, no. We have been hammered into the head from day one. This is how it works. Every round counts, every round hit. It's not difficult. It creates concentration, dedication, calm. Mm. And that's what you get. Voilà, monsieur. Voilà, monsieur. 
take me through your experience and your remember what, what you remember from your your first four months and and what hap happened after the four months. Yeah, it was. Direction. Yeah, uh, I was. Um, you know, it, it it was very interesting. Uh, uh, after the selection process, I was I was. We were selected and, and, and sent us uh, 40 guys to, to, to Casa Nolari, to this um, training camp. It's a place called La Passe. And this was a very, very, very impressive place. Yeah. You enter, it was a summer, and it was quite hot. We came running from the railway station with our kit, stressing. And as you walk in the doors, or the gates of this place, you know, of course, we didn't know how to march, so they just push us through like cattle. You know, and as you walk in the gates, there are two huge buildings. They are typical 19th century uh, French um, casernes or military buildings. They are huge buildings, and I will explain later inside. And everywhere there is either grass or stones, and everything is cut and beaten. And when you arrive, it's about lunchtime. So you have a thousand legionnaires who are going to get fed and they all walk by groups of 20 singing. Mm. So you come into this huge place that is so impressive and you see all these guys perfectly line up singing, dog, dog, everything is working. And I thought, holy shit, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> <laughs> I almost peed in my pants. I said, wow. I'm never going to learn how to survive in this system, you know. And as we get dumped in the corner and we brought upstairs, and so we, I, I don't remember now. We have probably 50 guys in this this class, yeah. you know. And we only live in one room on the third floor. And as French uh, military barracks are from the from the 19th century, they're six meters high under the roof. Mm. They are cold in the summer and they're cold in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Big windows and the beds are three or four in height. It's not much, much space. I, I don't know how many square meters it is, but, no. but it's tight space. Everybody get in there and you have a little locker that is dedicated to you and the training begins immediately. And straight away. Uh, you're under pressure. So I can give you my first day. We came in and sort of you just have to put your bag in the in the locker and, and we're on third floor. And the corporal is sort of saying, I want you to see everybody down with this type of shirt in uh, four minutes. It's basic stuff. So everybody understands French, grabs the shirt and start to run down. Those who don't understand, they run down so they didn't have a shirt. So when you come down, we get all lined up in the sun. A lot of shouting and screaming, and uh, by sign, understand you wanted this shirt, so everybody up and in and get your shirt and down. This goes on for hours. This is the pressure you get, mm. and you realize that these these walls are spotless from hundred years of cleaning. Mm. The floor is wooden and polished with wax, mm. so you have if you walk, it squeaks, especially in boots. But five times per day, it's clean with cloth. So everything shines, even the stairs shines, and you run up and down these stairs or you clean them. <laughs> and the pressure is on all the time. Yeah. And uh, the first night you go to bed, you know, uh, you're so tired, you close your eyes, and two seconds later, it's the morning, and you're up, and it's six, and you have one second to get out of bed because you'll be counted. If you're not out of bed, you will remember. <laughs> And make sure you remember. Oh yeah, oh yeah, good smack around. So it, it's not even an issue. Everybody's up immediately, and 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 the pressure is on, and the pressure is on, and the legion has a good system of keeping the pressure while it allows the people to fail, and then they show them what they expected, and we start over again. And if you're a bit thick, you didn't get it, so then we do it three times, four times, and this allows us to without understanding the language, actually getting the basics in. Yeah. And we spent just a few days in this this huge uh, camp because there was no reason to keep us uh, there. We were going out to the farm. Mm. And um, as soon as we got the trucks and a few intelligent guys had license, uh, 
we got this old Dodge 6x6 from the Second World War that had been in Indochina and in Algeria and in all the wars in Africa since last 40 years. They send some service already. Oh, yeah, yeah. We take them to pieces completely and put them together again. Yeah. And we brought this uh, out to the farm, and there we spent a month and a half in the farm. Uh, it was a very nice little farm in the mountain, in the Black Mountains in, uh, in south of France. But once more, I learned French. I learned very basic how to take apart a gun, put together, how to iron a uniform. Uh, that's an interesting story, you know, you have to learn how to iron the uniform. So um, they were not that nasty. They gave us iron, electrical irons. Oh, but okay. uh, they said, uh, uh, we have to save on, uh, on energy. Okay. So you don't turn on the lights. <laughs> so, so the solution. So when you use iron, you have to turn off the lights. Yeah. yeah. The solution is uh, to put on your helmet. Okay. And on top of the helmet, you put a candle. Okay. Okay. So that is the light. That is light. Uh, the problem is, take some coordination because as you move forward your head, oh. your uniform comes in the shade of the helmet, so you don't see anything. And if you tilt it, the thingy, uh, the wax drops on your uniform, that's not ideal. So you have to sort of, so the whole idea is to push everybody into the situation where you got three guys standing around or holding the helmet because the candle has to be on the helmet mm. and you cannot put it next to us so st st is forbidden no yeah. no 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 the key is there while one guy is ironing and the other ones are lightening up for him and then you have as i said just to take just a short it's 15 creases in a shirt yeah, that's crazy, yeah. so you have exactly how many millimeters there should be two creases on each arm there should be three creases on each shoulder. And all is measured by the size of the matchbook in your ration pack. So it is all measured. And then you have five creases, uh, three creases standing in the middle of the back of the ring and two laying down. Yeah. So that is uh, one, two, three, uh, six on the front, four, that's 10, five on the back. That's yeah. 15 creases in the shirt. We won't go through the trousers and I kept you know that. But, yeah. <laughs> so, but you can imagine the stress you have when you are trying to get this uniform correctly with your friends that you can almost not communicate with because my buddy is from Senegal and he speaks only French and he's not a good ironer but uh, okay he can hold the helmet and I can manage and you know and then but then and you end up uh, after a long night of trying and failure and when the day is growing and the, what do you call the dawn, yeah. the sun is coming up, the platoon is standing there with perfectly ironed uniforms. Yeah. And you have learned for the next 40 years how to iron. Yeah. And all you have to do is quickly pack them in a locker, change sport uniform and go and run 20 kilometers. Yeah, because you always start uh, the day with some sports. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I start the day, you know, uh, yeah, usually running an hour, hour and a half running. Mm. That's good to get the, the sleep out of your head. <laughs> Even if you didn't sleep. <laughs> so yeah, you start to do that and, and just to to get the people into the, into the rhythm and was you it, run like a pack. Was the taxing on your feet and everything when you do it every day, seven days a week? You never well, get the some, day off? A lot of people fail. Yeah, mm. And I, I think the people who succeed are not the people that are very good at one thing. The people that succeed is people that are more or less okay in everything. Good at adapting. Yes. The best runners can only run, you know. So you have to be more flexible. You have to be adaptable. Uh, as I said, for a young, fit young man, the, the requirements are not terribly difficult. You know, they're, they're manageable. Mm -hmm. You know, you can run, uh, I don't know, you know, with... with with a with a with a 15 kilos back on your back or 20, I think it is now a rucksack, weapon, helmet, and all. You have to run uh, eight kilometers in less than 50 minutes. Okay, uh, that's not impossible. No. Um, but you have to be young. You have to be fit. You have to uh, you have to be able to, and to, you do have to do it again and again and again. Yeah, and you don't know what is happening next. You don't know when you will sleep. You don't know when this will end. You don't know when you will get food. No. It goes on 
all the time. And it's very, very interesting. It shapes you, your morality uh, for life. Did he push you a lot on the foods? Yeah. Um, yeah, there were not much food. I mean, we didn't die, and we got enough calories, you know, and, but you, you will lose weight <laughs> in basic training, yeah. And, and the food is, you know, um, they will designate uh, four or five legionnaires every day who makes the food. Yeah. So that's a bit luck, you know. If you got two Chinese and one Korean uh, with a Norwegian trying to cook the French menu that is lined up by the legion, mm. uh, the result can be not so good. Uh, disasters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> disasters happen. So, but... Once more, uh, your part in the pack, your part as the group, uh, pushes you to do your best. I've never cooked an egg in my life, uh, but I try to think quickly, ask questions, and yeah, I cooked. Because it was my day to cook. Was it any uh, stage of that journey you think to yourself, this was a stupid idea? Oh yeah, yeah. Or oh, most of the time, you want to <laughs> run away. You want to go home. <laughs> I couldn't because I had a big mouth before I left. So, okay. yeah, yeah, so I couldn't go back with the tail between my no, 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 no. Oh, we lost a lot of people. A lot of people. A lot of people run away. Yeah, yeah. They don't fit in. No. The cost <clears throat> of being a member of this club is too high. Mm. No, they will protect themselves and say, "Oh no, it's boring. It's not for me. This is not expected." You know, they they have high opinions about themselves. They should be. Um, already in the helicopter with the machine gun displaying their highest superiority knowledge about uh, what's going on. So um, they fail. They fail. Mm. What survives is the basic guys who get into this format, who adapt and understand, do what's required of you and do it well. That's it. Yeah, and be happy. And when you finally get out of there and you find out My life is my body and a little locker. That's all I own. That's it. And I make more money than I can spend because there is no <laughs> way you, can, you can't spend any money. <laughs> and you have no troubles because, I mean, I don't mind waking up at six in the morning around 20 kilometers, doing fine. And it's a good life. And once you start to understand that the discipline is to your advantage, When you know when you start to know the system, you can adapt. Mm. You can um, you can be ready up front. You can, and then then it's like riding the wave. Yeah, very simple. I didn't have a bad day in the legion after basic training. Well, everything was walking the park after that. Yeah, ah, I loved it. It uh, it was fantastic. But on the basic training, um, you told me about the story when uh, you have an Englishman. Next to you, mm. it's deserted in the night time. And yeah. it's uh, unfortunately, well, <laughs> get your problem. Yeah, what happened, we was in a place called Kalus, which is, a, anyway, a, a training camp. And we're going to do a half marathon, 21 kilometers run. Uh, but um, With Dennis no uh, backpack enough. No, 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 it was just like like a, a run in sport yeah, clothes, yeah. yeah. And and at night, it, this is a, we were there in a in a big barn. We were sleeping in a barn. It was a big old barn. You know the legion doesn't like classrooms and nice camp. So we were sleeping in a barn in the dust, uh, and we had our equipment, and we were lined up. You know in this barn that the cows had just left two weeks ago. It was still stinking. You know, and we have to install our military system with our sleeping bag and roll it out and put. Uh, Uh, you know, the helmet there, the gun there, and everything has to be in the right place, and your shoes are there and then, and, you know, and of course there's no light, it's dark and it stinks, and uh, we're doing military things the whole day. And finally we get to bed, and I hear this British guy next to me at night, as we say in Norwegian, <laughs> you know, he's uh, noisy. Yeah, he was doing something, I said, fucking I'll get to bed, you know. <clears throat> anyway, so, I didn't realize he and a friend of him, they ran away. Deserted, yeah? Yeah, they deserted that night. Uh, but it in, in his immense smartness and viceness, he, he took my running shoes and left me his. The problem is I'm 45 and he's 41. <laughs> so 
the next day after the mess of missing two people and uh, chaos screaming and shouting and yeah but anyway uh give you the details um we are still going to do 21 kilometer run and i suddenly with my little norwegian foot uh, feet had uh, 41 shoes uh that didn't even work for my little sister but um i run uh i went ahead um because it was not an option to start complaining then because then already the, the, the guys was quite aggressive because somebody deserted there yeah. yeah and uh, with hindsight i think i should have yeah. you know uh, uh, and they would have understood but in in the situation i was i didn't i was pressure, uh, i was you know scared and in really I'm four weeks in the legion you know you know i'm not there to complain you know so i did this run um it was so painful that i i after 10 kilometers i think i lost uh, contact with my feet but you can't stop it was not an option because i knew that i didn't have the french to explain that my feet the shoes were too small uh and if i i could have done it before but after running everybody was say oh now this guy is trying to you know so i was going to get uh, some sticks around my head so i just kept on running and um and when i finally got in after 21 kilometers i uh, i i collapsed i couldn't walk uh so they pulled the shoes up with just blood and a mess you know yeah. and uh and they were very happy because they finally understood why you know and um i got a lot of respect from my leaders from it i didn't realize it in those days but probably uh that's the right thing to do mm. uh in good man or stafford as i was called in those days mm. so um, without wanting to do it i think i got a lot of brownie points for those for that trip <laughs> yeah. it's just uh to giving it up is not in your language you can't and and i think that's that's the whole point with the with the basic training is to understand you can do whatever you want but just don't give up hmm. and um, that's probably you don't, you don't lose before you give up don't you i didn't get it you don't lose before you give up yeah you can lose but you you can't give up yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. no and and but a, a proper loser is it's one of giving up mm. if you never giving up mm. in, in in theory you never lost yeah and and i think it's i i suppose you know that's the case of most militaries you know it's it's a hard requirement and people are suffering and and and, and it's a part of the of the training of the people i i fully understand uh but in legion is taking to 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 a far higher degree mm. and and we are back to this belonging mm. running in two small shoes bought me a leg- legitimacy as a uh goer yeah. you know didn't give up giving up yeah. mm. after those four months what happened what is the next step ah uh, uh, long step it's long step <laughs> yeah it's long step uh after four months um so when you do your four months you do the, there is an exam in the end mm-hmm. what we call a rally exam so you 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 do shooting you do running you, you put the batteries in the radio you put the frequency you go through an exam where basically it takes two days so you put on everything and you run and you come to a place and you do your exam there you estimate the distance of something and you uh, so they test you in every thing that you have learned those four months yeah, yeah. yeah and this this group of 50 the 50 candidates in the beginning with the deserters and the sick and the people who fell off uh, by for different reasons after after four months we were maybe somewhere between 25 and 30. Mm. and there is a number one and there is a number 25. yeah yeah that's the result so basically people get posted as as um, uh, as there are places so number one can choose and number two and um, okay. I, w- i was lucky i was number two uh and uh, so um of course i had decided i was going to the cavalry regiment why is that ah i spoke to a corporal there was an english corporal in 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 my basic training and he came from this regiment and he said um that gives us time to speak about the he explained me the whole difference between the cavalry and the, and the paratroopers yeah and um 
He says, you know, the paratroopers are very, very good people. There's no problem. But, but you can easily see, and especially in the, in the training regiments, you know, there are cavalry people from the wreck or from the cavalry regiment, and there are paratroopers, and there are the others, and they're there. And you can easily identify the, the paratrooper because he has a, a low forehead. You know, he is uh, a bit Neanderthal and doesn't speak so much and doesn't write so much. And if you give him a map, he will just turn it upside down and say, oh, lost, climb mountain, pain, yeah. <laughs> uh, while the cavalry guy, you can you can easily identify by his clear eyes, his high forehead, his open-mindedness, and, and his, uh, his, his easy look of life and his his domination of the situation in general. Okay, so that's the that's easy way to explain <laughs> the difference. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the most visible. I'm sure we'll get comments about this. But the yeah. next time we go to France to take a drink, <laughs> yes, yeah. Mr. Tallis is going to have a fight. Uh, no, we are not going to have a fight at all. Because, you, know, you, you can see this in the comment section. You will notice there will yeah. be cavalry guys yeah, commenting yeah. And, they, and they will be able to make coherent phrases. But they will, paratroopers, go, yeah. <laughs> But they can't write, so it's okay. Uh, <laughs> and but what he told me is, is, is the most important with these things is that the parachutes they are very strong, they are very fit, they are very good guys, you know, and they jump out of parachute in 400 meters altitude, and their guns have a reach of 400 meters. So he said their world is a bubble of 400 meters. That's it. Okay. They don't know anything about. It. They're like it's like outer space. Mm. Further away is like that. But in the cavalry, if you are corporal in the cavalry, they will give you a jeep a map and a job, and you will be 20 kilometers away from your boss, and you will have your own job. And I thought, that's not stupid. A bit of freedom. Yeah, and I thought making war driving around in a Jeep is better than running around. So so I went uh, wanted to go to the first wreck then, of course, um, for obvious reasons. And um, uh, But the captain said no. Uh, you can't go to the wreck now. You have been selected to stay six months on a corporal's course and then do one training as an instructor or as a help instructor in the basic training. Okay. Uh, basically, it's a horrible job. I didn't know, but uh, you shut up. Uh, it's, it's not popular in the Legion, but okay. Uh, I got fooled into it and... Because in religion, nobody wants to do the instruction. Nobody wants to be in the school regiment. It's a horrible job, you know. No, no. Everybody wants to be in the combat unit. Yeah. So um, they have a big difficulty of of getting instructors. Okay. I mean, later when I was in the in the cavalry, if they would send me to the school, it's like punishment. You know, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? <laughs> yeah. So you know, so they have to sort of use these tricky methods to get people to go there. <laughs> so and you get suckered in. So as a young legionnaire, I went straight on to uh, a very long corporal course, yeah. uh, which is a sort of an intense training, which was interesting. And after that, I did another basic training as an instructor. But in its corporal training, what, what did you learn about then? Ah, oh, you learn everything. Um, first of all, um, the corporal learns about being exemplary. So the corporal in the legion is the super legionnaire. You learn to run because you have to run better than the legionnaires. Yeah. You learn to climb rope because every day before lunch, we climb a six meter rope. If you as the leader cannot climb a six meter rope, how are you going to? No credibility. Yeah. No credibility. So you learn to climb ropes better than the legionnaires. You learn how to take apart and put together all the guns faster, better than legionnaire. The corporal in the legion is what we call a moniteur. So we can say that there are two levels of teaching. There is a teaching where you have a level as an instructor where you can instruct and give the knowledge. And then you have the corporal level who is demonstrating. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So he does the action. Yes. He takes the gun apart in 20 seconds, put it together in 16, whatever. Uh, he is the guy who knows how to do everything in the platoon physically. Yeah. Yeah. He, he knows how that should be. The sergeant is more the theoretical guy. We'll say we can get to that later. So the corporal course is basically a horrible course where you do Ooh, everything okay. like the legionnaires, but 10 times more. Yeah. Uh, 
For example, we would go to the shooting range, it's 20 kilometers away. We would run there with the wooden frame for our aiming, for our shooting, you know, mm-hmm. the yeah, I don't target. Know, yeah, yeah. target. On the back, we start at five in the morning running. And we shoot and we run back with the frames and just things like that. So, of course, there's a lot of te- technical things, you know, in communications, in, in NBC, in first aid, in, in a, a lot of technical matters. At the soldier level, mm-hmm. the corporal learns it 10 <coughs> times more. In order to be the super legionnaires, that is better than the other legionnaires, to have credibility. Mm-hmm. And then you have basic leadership uh, training, where you learn how to march people around like in every army and 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 you learn how to do the command of two or four or five people in in the combat situation of course in basic infantry training but basically the corporal's course is a horrible probably the hardest course physically because it's pressure all the time and now you're going to be a corporal so you really have to know what you're doing mm. and um yeah i had um a little story there maybe that my, my, my chief teacher was of course a Portuguese. And every day in this corporal course, there is one of the students is, um, is, uh, is the corporal of the day. So he, uh, yeah, he is now the corporal. Uh, he's the guy who suffers. He's the victim it. of the day. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, I was very young compared to many of the others. Many of the others came from the other units in the Legion. They had two, three, four, five years already. And I came straight out of basic training. So I was not the most popular guy, you can imagine. And um, so I had to line them up and all that to go and eat. And I remember we had a big German who was the biggest guy. And um, when you're lining up, you have to call up the biggest guy, put him there. He's the reference point. And then everybody lines up on him. Yeah. Uh, And so I called him up, you know, and he was not playing the game. He was not giving a fuck, you know, and all that. So I I just put him up, you know, and... um, he was obviously not going to, but anyways, I thought this is <coughs> do or don't, you know. So I just moved in slowly to him and said, okay, line up, okay. And he didn't really, like, and I smacked him down, you know. <laughs> Three, four kicks hard, and broke his nose. Uh, big chaos, because you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> and uh, I marched off and into the boss office, and, uh, you know, he said, uh, this is this big Portuguese Dionisio from the war in Angola, you know. And who the fuck do you think you are, you know? So I said, well, you know, he wasn't listening, and I had to make him listen. So he said, mm-hmm. okay. Did you break his nose? And I said, mm, I hope so. I said, okay. So can I break your nose? I said, mm. bang, I got it in the face. <laughs> So I kept, he didn't break my nose. My nose was just bleeding. <laughs> so, so I got out of the office with my nose bleeding, and I was back corporal of the day. <laughs> That's how things work. That's how things work. <laughs> but nobody gave me any trouble after that. No. Okay. Mm. You just draw your line. Has to be done. And I mean, it's a harsh environment. Yeah. And people have to understand that, you know, this is outside <coughs> the normal society, you know. It's, it's, of a, course. it's a rough life and, and you have to play mm. play off the rules. But when you're talking, um, lining up the people and Marses and everything, the legionnaires don't Mars same as the other people. It's kind, <laughs> kind of sexy. Maybe uh, if people to look it up, but can I explain what, what's a... What's a Oh, why? It, why it's a tradition Mars? from the Alsan regime, from before the religion, before, before the religion, before the revolu- French Revolution. Yeah. Some of the foreign troops were walking slowly. Yeah. So the French troops are marching at 120 paces per minute, yeah. uh, like most armies do. Uh, the legion doesn't. It marches at 88 paces per minute. With some proper songs. Yeah, with proper songs and proper styles. So it's a bit slower. Um, in practicality, in, in practical ways, it means that we we put a lot of effort on this, and it's not so easy to go so slow. The 120 is easier to get, so you have that takes a lot of training, but it becomes more martial. You can see it on on, on the it parade in. Sexy, you know? Yeah, we always come last, of course, because we go slower <laughs> than the others. But um, yeah, but it, it, it when you see the Mars and you hear the songs, 
mm. it, it's uh, it's gives a special feels to it. Of course, mm. this all this belongingness, ah. you know, proud. Is it proudness or whatever? I don't of know. course, yeah, it's of course. Yeah. And if you take it back to a civilian perspective, it's um, almost like we don't fucking care. We go in our own time. Yes, yeah. exactly. You don't push us, and we, and it's it's our way of doing it. Yeah. You know, and um, this belonging. It's uh, if I take a little sidestep, it's like I think normal people, at, at least men in in the Western world, many of them are are football enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. And and they are supporters of a team mm. or ice hockey or whatever, and you see the <coughs> sorry devotion or the dedication or the the activity people can do as supporters of a football club and how involved they can become and how enthusiastic the legion is exactly the same by by hundred. Mm. So it is all those Stone Age belonging. Uh, status, domination, be a part of the group, be a part of the pack. I know I'm repeating myself, mm. but it is very important to get out that you are a part of this pack. So there is no doubt. When I see the the Legion parade today, I'm I'm in. There is automatic. I'm in, and I'm hundred percent sure there is no legionnaire who's going to write in the comments of this on YouTube or wherever we <laughs> post it one day. There is nobody who's going to say, oh, well, no, I don't care anymore. It doesn't happen. Nobody comes out of the Legion without being in for life. I think we're going to run off. Uh, but this is going to co be continued. So, so if wherever you're hearing this, uh, you can Spotify is free version. So you can go inside there and and uh, and. Um, and Put on the notified Nordpodden, mm. and uh, we are going. Now we are um, in uh, the corporal training, and we're going the next steps, and we're going through the wars you've been into. We're going all your life as a legionnaire now. Yes, and in the comment section, if people have questions, once more, come on, they want, us, to, want to hear about it. Uh, it will be more than interesting, and uh, and any feedback is interesting. And any of my former colleagues uh, uh, that should have any comments to make, uh, don't forget, I'm still able to smack them around. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, the next episode is going to coming quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So just uh, turn off on the notification bells and uh, follow us. Uh, we are in Segen Nord Media and uh, in YouTube. And we also have in Facebook, but we also go on Spotify, iTunes, all the all the stations. But uh, Put on the notify bell and uh, don't lose the rest. Legio Patria Nostra. Thank you very much, sir.